During his reception of the former candidates to the presidential elections and Nouri and Hajar, President Bashar al-Assad said the high turnout at the ballot box is brought to light the strength of the Syrian people and their adherence to their free decision-making. In implementation of the amnesty decree, a number of prisoners who were not involved in shedding Syrian blood were released. The Australian Prime Minister affirms that the Australian terrorists who have come back from Syria pose the biggest threat after the September 11th attacks. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our news for today. President Bashar al-Assad received today the former candidate to the presidential elections, Dr. Hassan al-Nouri. Al-Nouri said the presidential elections that took place last week were conducted with transparency and integrity and constituted a crucial step on the way of consolidating the principles of democracy. On his part, President al-Assad said the success of the elections process and the high turnout of citizens at the ballot boxes has brought to light the strength of the Syrian people and the adherence to their free decision-making despite the difficult and extraordinary circumstances Syria has been living and the attempts of certain sides abroad to impose their will on the Syrians. President Bashar al-Assad also received the former candidate to the presidential elections, Mr. Maher Hajjar. Hajjar said during the meeting that the great confidence granted by the Syrian people to President al-Assad through the elections confirms the Syrians' determination to combat terrorism until it's fully eliminated and to restore security and stability to Syria and move forward towards a better future. On his part, President al-Assad said that the first experience of multi-party elections in Syria has been successful and has affirmed the Syrians' successful practice of democracy. He said the big victor in these elections are the Syrian people who have confronted all challenges and have had their say with a strong determination and solid will about the future of their country. Welcome back. Syrian Arab army units have foiled an attempt by terrorists to advance in the direction of Tal Juma, a Nawa countryside in the governorate of Dara, inflicting on them heavy losses. In implementation of the amnesty decree number 22 issued by President Bashar al-Assad yesterday, a number of prisoners who had not been involved in shedding Syrian blood have been released from Hama Central Prison. The governor of Hama, Dr. Ghassan Khalaf, hoped such measure would provide a crucial opportunity for them to reconsider their life, behavior, and tendencies, and to contribute to the reconstruction of the homeland. He called on all those who have been set free to return to their families, to merge in their societies, and to resume their normal activities and life. Australian Prime Minister Tony Abbott expressed fear over the return of the Australian terrorists who joined the terrorist groups in Syria to their country, saying that they posed the greatest threat after the attacks of September the 11th in 2001. Abbott stressed that the menace posed by the departure of the extremists to join the terrorists who fight in Syria is not restricted to the possibility of their becoming more extreme, but there is a fear that they might develop the abilities to carry out deadly terrorist attacks when they come back to their countries. Abbott explained that the growing threat of the terrorists and the continuation of the situation in Syria could increase terrorism all over the world and also seriously escalate the menace. Australia had estimated that about 50 to 100 of its citizens had gone to Syria to fight alongside the terrorist groups.
Finally, despite the war that casts heavily on all the Syrians, they, of different ages, continued to live their normal life, showing extreme courage by overcoming difficulties in all fields. Students of the Institute of Salih al Wadi for Music culminated a whole year full of hard work with a piano concert held at the stage of the Institute. Students of Sulhil Wadi Institute showed distinguished talent at playing piano. I'm Rand. I'm 11 years old. I came to thank my teacher Svetlana because she stood by my side all the year. And I thank my parents because they encouraged me. My name is Julia Al-Akhras, I'm 11 years old. I was very much excited awaiting the end of the term in order to celebrate our success. I thank my teacher Svetlana because she supported us. I'm so happy. Bracing the danger and the daily mortar shells, the students of the institute were persistent to attend their musical classes over the whole year. We have small students as well as students at high school. Every year we hold a party to honor the students. Although the situation is a bit difficult, yet we remain working with our children to become experts in playing music. In turn, our students are very much happy to play and we hope to restore security and stability very soon. The Arab Institute for Music was established by his founder, Sur Wadi, in 1961 and afterwards it was affiliated to the Ministry of Culture. In 2004, the institute was named the Institution of Sulhil Wadi. Many generations of Syrian musicians graduated from this institute and became famous locally and internationally. The institute remains the main source of musical creativity in Syria. With this, we end our news for today. Thank you for watching. For more details about Syria and the region and to view this bulletin again, you can always visit our website in English, syriaonline.sy. Now to latest business and market news with Nariman Qassam, but after a short break.